Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about our work called Temporally Reliable Motion Vectors for Real-Time Ray Tracing. In this work, we address the ghosting and lagging artifact in real-time ray tracing using our motion vectors. To explain where these artifacts come from, I'll first give a little background. Nowadays, real-time ray tracing is increasingly being used in a variety of industries. However, despite the rapid progress, it still only allows for low sampling rates. For example, to guarantee real-time performance, for each pixel, only four rays can be traced. As a result, the rendered image will be noisy. To improve the essential sampling rate, many research directions have been explored. Among these directions, the temporal filter method stands out. For a better explanation of how it works, let's zoom in a little bit. For a pixel x sub i in the current noisy frame, it finds the corresponding pixel i sub i minus 1 in the previous frame. Then, it linearly blends these two pixels using a blending factor alpha. The alpha is a factor between 0 and 1 that determines how much temporal information it trusts and used. In this way, the shading results are accumulated and smooth. Now, the question is how to find such correspondence. We will use a technique called the back projection, when two consecutive frames are given. For each pixel in current frame, we first project it back to its workspace to get the shading point. Then, according to the moment of the geometry, we transform this shading point back to its previous frame. Finally, we project the transformed shading point back to the image space to get the corresponding pixel. Now, we have found the temporal correspondence. And the red arrow here is called the motion vector. It is a 2D vector in the image space that points from the current pixel location to its previous location. The motion vectors are stored on a 2D texture like this. Note the black pixels in the texture means their motion vectors are all their relevance, since the geometries within these pixels are all stated. So far, this looks pretty good. However, could it always find the right temporal correspondence for us? The answer is no. The motion vectors may be wrong in certain cases. The first typical failure is the shadows. Here we have a static plane with a static calendar standing on it. Now, there is an area light source moving to the left, while casting shadows onto the plane. Let's rewind the time to the last frame. If we calculate the motion vector of the static planes, we will find that the motion vectors are all their rulings, since the geometry is static. In this case, if the temporal filtering is applied anyway, it will simply blend the pixels on the two planes. As a result, lagging artifact will emerge. Another typical failure is glossy reflections. Here we have an object moving to the left, and below the object, there is a glossy surface. Again, let's revert the time to the last frame. Similar to the shadow case, all of the motion vectors of these glossy plans are also zero lengths. And again, lagging artifact will emerge. The next failure case is occlusions. We have an object moving to the left and with a white wall behind it. Now, we revert the time to the last frame. For the previous occluded regions, the motion vectors are again all zero lengths. So it will simply blend the, this region with occluders in the previous frame. As a result, ghost artifact will emerge. Various methods are designed to alleviate the temporal failures. The neighborhood clamping method first gathers the color information from neighborhood pixels. Then, the computer accelerate the bounding both or Gaussian distribution of the colors, and clamp or clip the history color according to it. This kind of method aims at rectifying the history color to suppress the ghosting artifact. SVCR method analyzes both spatial and temporal variance to get the shape and size of spatial filters. This method focuses on a better spatial filter scheme to acquire better current results. And the ASVCR method detects the rapid temporal change to adjust the blending factor alpha to rely more or less on spatial filter treating ghosting artifact for noise. All of the previous methods are aiming at detecting the temporal failures and either re rectifying or rejecting the wrong temporal information. In contrast to previous methods, 
Our goal is to find more reliable temporal information. Specifically, we will focus on three commonly encountered temporal failure cases, shadows, glossy reflections, and occlusions. Now, let's take a look at our method. The high-level idea is that we design separate motion vectors for each of these effects. In accordance with the different type of motion vectors, we also treat our final output as a collection of separate components. Using the LTC method, the shading part can already be reasonably approximated in a noisy-free way. So now we only need to apply each of motion vector to the remaining three components respectively. Let's first take a look at our motion vector for shadows. Remember that all we want to do is to find the right temporal correspondence for a pixel in current frame. We already know that for shadows, tracking the movement of geometry is not working. Our key observation is, can we find a similar shadow in the previous frame? The answer is yes. These pixels in the previous frame should be the right temporal correspondence. So, our insight is, for shadows, it is not the geometry we want to track, but the movement of shadows. Now, the question is, how to track the movement of shadows? Inspired by PCSS method, we propose to track the movement of shadows by following the blocker and light position over time. Giving two consecutive frames. For pixel in shadow, we know exactly the word space position of its shading point, I sub i, the block position b sub i, and the light sample position i sub i. Since the blocker and the light sample positions are associated with a certain object, we immediately know their position in previous frame. Now, suppose that the geometry around I sub i is a local flat surface. We can easily find the intersection I sub i minus 1 between this plane and the line connecting light at the blocker. Finally, we project this intersection to the image space and this project pixel is our tracked shadow position. Our motion vector can be formulated writing like this. Note that the only assumption we made is that the geometry is a locally flat surface. But what if its surface isn't flat? For example, there is a box above this intersection. Then, the real shading point in the previous frame is on the top of the box. To deal with this situation, we introduce a simple but effective fallout heuristic. That is, we measure the extent of non polarity We connect these two shading points and measure the angle theta between the normal and the plane and this line. Our key observation is that only when theta is close to 19 degree, we can fully depend on the temporal result. Otherwise, we should trust more on the current results. So, we use theta to adjust the alpha. Finally, we achieve high quality and no lagging shadows. We compare our result with one generating using traditional motion vectors with and without the neighborhood clamping approach used in temporal filtering. We also compare our method with SVGF and ASVGF. Note that we can produce shadows that are closely attached to the fence. We produce the closest result to the ground truth. Traditional motion vectors produce significantly ghosting artifacts. With clamping, the results are less lagging but much noisier. SVTM method produces overblurred and lagging shadows. ASVTM method discards temporary information resulting in noisy shadows. Next, let's take a look at our motion vector for glossy reflections. Similar to tracking the shadows, we can also track the movement of glossy reflections instead of the geometry. This is inspired by Zimmer et al. and Mara et al. on mirror and specular reflections. They assume that a virtual image is the real object behind the mirror reflectors and calculate the motion vectors of the virtual image instead of the reflector. However, the question is, is this still valid for glossy reflection? The answer is no. Since we trace one secondary ray per pixel, we can only import and sample the glossy lobe to decide where to bounce. And the bounce direction can certainly be different from the specular reflected direction. Our insight is that no matter if we are using the specular or sample direction, 
what we need to do is still to find the corresponding pixel in the previous frame. However, since glossy BRDFs model a non-delta distribution, multiple shading points may reflect to the same hit point, as there are multiple pixels from the previous frame that corresponding to XI, forming a finite area in the emitted space. So, our goal is to design a stochastic motion vector, aiming at finding one pixel from this finite area at a time. We start from the important sampled secondary ray at the shading point S sub i and the secondary hit point H sub i in the world space. We then transform A sub i to the previous frame. Since the center of glossy BRDF lobe is usually the strongest, here we can first assume that the glossy BRDF degenerates to pure specular. Now we can immediately find its mirror reflected image. Next, we project it towards the screen to get the SC sub i minus 1. Then, our insight is that as the glossy lobe gradually emerges, a region will appear around the SC sub i minus 1, in which all the points can reflect it to the same hit point H sub i minus 1. This region can be approximated by tracing a glossy lobe from the virtual image towards this point. In practice, there is no need to trace any coins, and we simply assume that the glossy lobe is a Gaussian in directions and that the intersection region is a Gaussian in positions as well as in the image space. Then, our stochastic motion vector can randomly sample one corresponding pixel from the Gaussian function. It can be formally written like this. Similar to shadows, we again compare our result with this method. Specifically, we compare with the method using specular reflection motion vectors, also with clamping. Our glossy reflection motion vectors do not introduce ghosting artifacts. The result of the specular motion vector looks plausible, but we can fi also find the discontinuous artifacts around the edge of the reflected object. With traditional motion vectors, naive filtering produces significant ghosting. Clamping relieves the lagging but introduces the discontinuous artifacts. ESVGF will always result in noisy reflections. Finally, let's take a look at our motion vector for occlusions. Tracking the geometry is not working. However, different from shadows and glossy reflections, when occlusion happens, in theory, there are no temporal correspondence of pixels in the occluded regions. The back-projected motion vectors of these pixels will always land on the occluders. Thus, the previous pixel values cannot easily be used. To alleviate this issue, we start with the clamping method. They clamp the history pixel values of occluders to the current pixel value. But it's still prone to ghosting artifacts, since usually the occluders have completely different colors. Our insight is that if the history value is closer to the current value in the occluded regions, the issue produced by the clamping method can be better resolved. So, we propose to find a closer color instead. We observe that the closed color values often appear on the same object. In this case, closed color values appear on the background. So, with the object moving to the left, we temporarily reduce the color values from the right side. This is a relative motion. So, inspired by both at all, we are going to design a motion vector using this relative motion. For each pixel S sub i in the current frame, the traditional motion vectors use back projection gives the X sub i to y. We then continue to track the movement of y to z, using the motion vector of occluders. That is a forward projection. Then, based on the relative position of the X sub i and z, we can find the XO sub i minus 1 in the previous frame. Since we have applied a back projection followed by a forward projection, essentially, using two motion vectors, we named our approach draw motion vectors. So far, we can find a much closer color value to X sub i on the background. However, if the corresponding pixel land on another object, simply applying the color values will result in clearly repetitive patterns because it is essentially copying pasting image content. To address this issue, we propose to temporarily reuse the incident radiance instead of the shading results. Specifically, for the application of diffuse indirect illumination, we recall the 2D incident radiance per pixel. To efficiently store the 2D incident radiance per pixel, 
we refer to the representation in voxel co-tracing approach. We subdivide a hemisphere into six cones, and during the spatial or temporal filtering, instead of averaging the shading result, we filter for each cone individually, using the overlapping solid angles between each pair of cones as a filtering weight. We again compare our result with these methods. Our motion vectors avoid noise and ghosting, preserving details and suppressing overblur. We produce a closed result to the ground truth. SVGM methods still result in significant amount of overblur. The SVGM method appears to be smeared speculatively and lose temporal stability. The traditional motion vector introduced ghosting artifact. With clamping, the results are less ghosting but much noisier. Now, let's move to the discussion. Here we show the performance of our motion vectors. We compare with SVGF using traditional motion vectors. Different from previous work, our main contribution is not a spatial filter approach of system, but a different type of motion vectors. As one would expect from their simple computation, in practice, we observe only a negligible performance cost by replacing the traditional motion vector with ours. Of course, there are some limitations. For example, when filtering the occlusions, sometimes our method will still introduce faintly visible ghosting due to the intensely varied irradiance in the local area. Also, currently we do not explicitly handle the case where the motion vectors pointing to uh, regions outside the image plane. Moreover, when the temporal change is too drastic, there is barely any temporal information that we can use. One typical case is the sudden switch of scenes. Now, let's wrap up. We have proposed multiple types of motion vectors for better utilizing of temporal information in real-time retracing. We show that our motion vectors are temporally more reliable than traditional motion vectors, with negligible performance overhead, and they are all production ready. In the future, we would like to design temporally reliable motion vectors for distributing effects, such as motion blur and depth of field effect. It would also be interesting to keep multiple previous frames to study non exponential temporal forms. Exploiting machine learning approach to better summarize temporal correlations from examples could also be a promising direction. Thanks for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions now.